Okay, I think yeah. it's working now. Sorry, everybody. All right, uh, let me share my screen and let's get started. Yeah, um, Fraser, can I just take two minutes of yours? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah, so I just want to introduce everyone. A very good evening to all of you. Today we have Fraser with us to take the webinar, uh, the live session on TRP, Total Physical Response, TPR. And just before we move ahead, let me give a very brief introduction of Fraser. Fraser has a decade of experience in English language teaching. He has been engaged in online English education for the past seven years. His instructional expertise extends to both adult and young learners in Vietnam and Thailand, as well as online students from diverse nationalities. Presently, he serves as an EAL specialist at Regents British International School in and also operates Change Limited, a well-received blog and a job board for online English teachers. Since 2016, he has been coaching teachers on how to switch from traditional classroom teaching to online teaching. Fraser, would you want to add some more? Um, no, that was a, a good introduction. I, I will get into more detail in the presentation. Thank you. The, the right, thank you very much for that introduction. Okay, shall we start? Absolutely, you can move ahead. Awesome. Okay, let me share my screen. Wow. <laughs> okay, one moment. Okay, great. Can everybody see the presentation there? Yes. Yeah, yes, please. Excellent. Okay, so let's get started. As we mentioned, uh, today's topic is all about using TPR in the ESL classroom. And I'll explain uh, what that is in detail a little bit uh, later. So uh, thanks for the introduction. A little bit more about me. Yes, I am currently... Uh, an EAL teacher at Regents British and International School in Bangkok. I've been teaching online for and offline for over 10 years now. And uh, I have uh, developed my own teaching applications and EdTech applications, um, such as Teachers Exchange and ESL Courseware, which are little tools and useful things that help online teachers um, teach English online because there are some differences to teaching online and teaching in class and um, it's not always effective to teach in the same style as you would in a classroom uh, when you are in this little box online. You have to make use of uh, different resources. Okay, so let's get into uh, the topic today. Okay. So what is TPR? Uh, TPR is total physical response. And it is something that I've been using in the classroom for a long time, a lot of years. And it was developed in the 1960s by James. And it became popular more in the 80s. And it's making a bit of a comeback now uh, due to online education. And it is a method that is really suitable and works really well in uh, online classes. So how does TPR work? Uh, let's talk a little bit more about it and then I'll show you some examples of how to use it. But uh, to put it simply, it's all about uh, associating movements or actions with words and vocabulary and phrases. And it's been proven that this helps children and adults uh, you can use this with adults too. Uh, it helps them um, learn words much faster. So let's have a look. As you can see here, TPR involves uh, providing physical instruction to your target audience. Even simple things such as stand up, touch your nose, 
uh, can be total physical response. Uh, now, some people think that TPR is only the teacher doing the movements as they're speaking. For example, uh, they may say, open your book, open your book, take out your ruler. These are physical actions describing what you're doing, and it's something the teacher can use too. But to use TPR more effectively, uh, the student should also be involved in repeating the actions as they say the word. And the way the brain works, it really helps um, really helps with learning and language acquisition. So here are some benefits of uh, TPR. So um, TPR, TPR has been proven and shown to, uh, to help language learning in several different ways. Um, studies have found that it does work and it increases as well as uh, language acquisition. It also increases motivation. It makes the lesson more interactive and visual uh, for people who are more visual learners. And it can also increase participation. And uh, all these things work well together to, to uh, make the lesson more effective. All right. So I'm going to go through a few of the benefits. And then I'll show you a, a quick example of a teacher using uh, this, uh, this method. And then I'll talk more of my experience and how I like to uh, use it in the classroom. Hello to anybody who's just joined this lecture. Okay, so... All right, so the benefits of TPR. So firstly, by engaging uh, both the teacher and the student in physical activities, it helps students stay more focused and motivated during language lessons as they have to be both verbally uh, focused and also physically focused so they can't be doing other things they have to be 100 percent involved in the learning activity um, both verbally and also with their body so uh, it makes it harder to drift off or to lose interest and it increases participation and uh, interest in the lesson. So TPR can help students remember new vocabulary much easier. The way the human brain works is that when you associate a word with a, an image in your brain or an action or a movement, um, it will make it far easier for you to remember it uh, next time. I'm sure everybody here has had experiences where uh, they chose a visual object or an action uh, to help them remember a new piece of vocabulary or word in the language that they're learning. So um, TPR, as I mentioned, is all about physical movements um, and uh, some simple things, as we said before, stand up, touch your nose, and as I mentioned, it engages both the mind and the body. Okay, so uh, I will briefly explain a little more detail on how it works, and then I want to get to some more practical uh, examples. So to, to uh, break it down, TPR involves the teacher providing a physical instruction uh, for the target language uh, while the student responds with their own physical actions. So that's the important part. It's not just the teacher. It's a two part uh, activity where both the student and the teacher are engaging in the in these movements alongside the, the verbal. So by using these physical movements to demonstrate language concepts, con uh, concepts TPR can help students better understand and retain new language, right? So, for example, the teacher may say, sit down. But uh, it's far easier uh, for, let's say, a, a new student who's new to English um, to understand this if you demonstrate it too. And 
that you get the student to say the word sit down and then sit down. Get the student to say the word stand up and stand up. That is TPR at its most basic form. Performing an action while saying the vocabulary or phrase that needs to be taught. Uh, repeating it from both sides, the teacher and uh, the student. And by engaging in this body language experience, um, students connect the words uh, directly to its meaning instead of using translation. So in their brain, they're more, uh, when they hear sit down, they're instantly thinking of the visual and uh, the movement that happens with that action instead of having this level of translation in the middle which can make it easier to remember new vocabulary and words. Okay, so you can use TPR to teach a variety of language concepts, not just teaching new vocabulary. Uh, you can also use it uh, to better understand language situations, dialogue uh, through role play and real world uh, classroom settings and life situations too. So, um, by the way, if I'm going too fast, please uh, let me know and tell me to slow down. Um, so TPR can be used to teach basic commands, as I mentioned, sit down, stand up, raise your hand, turn around, jump, uh, which is things m many people may have used it before, but it can also be used to describe more complex language concepts such as verb tenses, the past tense, the future tense, um, and uh, other sentence structure. Uh, for example, when teaching uh, the word went, you could use an action of moving, uh, moving into the past. Okay, or uh, other concepts such as that. Okay, it can also be used to teach uh, vocabulary words uh, such as apple, uh, as you can, uh, you can, for example, teach the word apple and have your students uh, physically pretend to be eating an apple like this, something like that, uh, little things like that. So, um, yeah, so let me talk about a few more examples and how I've used it, and then I'll show you a an example. Okay, so why I love TPR is because it is so useful and effective in the online classroom. When you're teaching English online, uh, you often, it's very easy for the student, and if any of you have taught online during COVID, uh, you may have noticed this, it's, it's very easy for the student to not be involved in the lesson. Uh, to switch off, to hide, to do other things under the <laughs> under the screen, or to completely lose interest in the lesson, um, because when you're online, you're you're not in the same place, and you're confined to this box. Anything that happens outside of this box, um, the students could be doing things outside the box that you don't know, and uh, you've also got to be aware that this is your area of teaching and uh, nothing else really matters. So the reason TPR works well online is uh, because uh, you have video and camera that you can turn on and your students can both uh, respond and speak physically and you can make sure that your student is paying attention um, uh, by asking them to repeat the action as well as the word that you're teaching. Um, so uh, let me give you a quick example. Let's say you're teaching uh, the phrase uh, monkeys eat um, monkeys eat bananas. Okay. So you would first uh, explain the the concept of the three words. Uh, so we have monkeys eat and bananas. Uh, sorry, monkeys eat and bananas. So you would first uh, a few ways of doing this. You could use flashcards, uh, you could draw a picture, uh, you could even use translation to explain what the words mean. Uh, then you need to practice putting the words together. 
So you can start teaching these vocabulary by first saying the word monkey, then demonstrating monkey, something like this, monkey. And then you get your students to repeat and also go monkey or monkeys. And uh, if you've taught younger students before, you can uh, see how this can be quite effective. And then the word eat, eat, demonstrate eat. Again, your students will repeat and follow you, eat. And then bananas, but you can pretend to peel a banana and your students will repeat. And then you can put it together. Monkeys eat bananas. And as you can imagine, that's a, uh, the student's going to learn much faster doing an activity like this than just writing the words on the blackboard and having the students copy it down in their textbook or something like that. It makes it uh, interactive, it makes it visual, and they're using their motor skills, their movements, uh, to also implant the new vocabulary in their brain. Okay, uh, let's have a look. So that's why it works so well, and it works very well online because you've only got this small box to work with. So using uh, visual as well as just uh, audio or sound uh, is, is super useful and all the other reasons uh, why. So I use TPR in almost all of my online lessons with younger learners. Um, now there are ways of using TPR with adults too, which I'll get into a little bit later. Okay, so I think I covered most of these points here already. So um, here are a few examples. Interactive whiteboards can be used to display TPR com commands online. So instead of drawing the commands on the whiteboard or uh, showing a PPT, you can use interactive whiteboards to display, for example, monkey eats banana. Uh, you can then point to the, the, uh, the word and have the student do the action or do the action and ask the student to circle the word so that they're, uh, they're learning the, the visual spelling of the word as well as the, the listening and speaking part. Digital flashcards can also be used uh, through uh, TPR. You can hold up a certain flashcard or digital or even physical and have your student repeat that, repeat that motion. Uh, videos, again, you can use online too. So let's have a look at this, uh, this example of TPR being used in a, uh, I think a key stage one class. Uh, so these students will be quite young and they are learning English as a second language. So uh, I'll show you this video and then we'll discuss a few points uh, from it. So let's see if this will work. Oh, no, that didn't work. Okay, uh, can you hear the video? Yes. Yes, okay, good. The video is not audible, Fraser. We cannot hear anything from the oh, video. Oh, you cannot hear the video? Okay, let me share it a different way.
All right, let's see if it works now. Uh, can you hear the audio now? Sorry, Fraser, we can't. Okay, uh, so that actually I don't usually uh, teach on Google um, on this platform, so I'm uh, still looking how to do it. Uh, I will send you the link and I'll give everybody uh, five minutes to watch the video and then we'll come back and have a discussion. Let's do it that way. All right, there you go. Is it audible to all of you? No, ma'am. Is it audible, audible to you? No, the audio is not clear. Is it audible? No, it's not no, audible. It's not audible? Yes, it's not. It's not audible? Yes, yes, ma'am. Not here. Ma'am, it's not audible. Hello, good evening. I think it's not audible. So, if it is not audible, I think Fraser already shared the link. So, ah. those who want to uh, watch it later on, you can just copy down the link and you can uh, watch it later on. So actually, I know how to share the audio now if I've just found All out right. online. So I'll stop sharing and you just try to use it. Okay. Yeah. sequence is demonstrated. The children listen and do the movements accordingly. The sentences are repeated several times. In the beginning, it's important to maintain the order. The children learn to understand the meaning of the sentences with the help of mimes, gestures and drawings on the board. Doing the movements themselves is an important memory aid. 
show the plum to your mom, your mom says, Soon, the children can make the movements on their own and in a different order. Say hello to your mom. Your mom says, Eek! Say hello to your mom. Your mom shows you some plants. Your mom says, Eek! Eek! Okay? Say hello to your mom. You are hungry. Your mom shows you some plums. Cut open a plum. Show the plum to your mom. Your mom says. So as you can see in this video, uh, he's using TPR to teach not just vocabulary, but also uh, phrases and words such as show. So the students can understand the action of show. What, what does it mean to show something? Show the plums to your mom. Uh, and in this case, the teacher has already taught the actions. Now he's checking for understanding by, uh, by saying the words and, or the phrases. And then the students show that they understand by doing the actions. You can then repeat that in different orders. Uh, for example, have the students say the word and the teacher do the action. And then the, you can ask the students, did I do it right or wrong? And sometimes you can maybe do it incorrectly on purpose to see if the students notice. All right, let's continue. Very good. Okay, you listen to the CD and you write the numbers. Here we go. Say hello to your mom. Hello. It's one. Two. You're hungry. The children. Uh, so in this part, uh, they're listening to the audio. Uh, the reason for using an audio tape in this uh, classroom is because uh, the teacher is not a native speaker of English, so he might have a bit of an accent. So by using a recording, the students can hear uh, different English accents. They can hear uh, Australian English, British English, Indian English accents, uh, Filipino English accents, whatever. It's important to uh, for the students to hear different ways of speaking English uh, to help their ears uh, kind of click into the different accents that people have, uh, American and Canadian too, of course. Um, and in this exercise, they are listening to the word and in their book, they have pictures of the different actions that they did and they have to number uh, the correct action with the word. Uh, again, reinforcing the learning and helping with understanding and, and language acquisition. Okay, let's play the last part. Listen to the sentences from the CD. They write the numbers by the pictures in their book. Afterwards, they compare their results. And here? Six. Six. And the last number here? Two. Two. Yes. My job is to make college easier because students have a lot on them. Fraser, you have muted yourself. Apologies. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so did you hear my explanation of the video or was I muted? Uh, that time it was, uh, you, you, uh, it was audible. Can, oh, okay. All right, great. Sorry, everybody. I'm still getting used to this platform. I've uh, not used it for presenting before. Uh, let me uh, let me share the presentation again and go through the last part, and then we'll have some time for Q and A. If anybody has any questions. Yes. Okay. Let's. 
see here. Okay, so as I mentioned before, TPR can not only be used for kids, uh, it can also be used for adult learners. So usually when we're doing these activities for kids, we're doing funny dances, uh, fun movements, um, and uh, interesting and uh, uh, kind of funny uh, things that will grasp the, the attention of a young child. Um, it can also be used for teaching phonics, uh, if anybody has come across Jolly Phonics or the Jolly Phonics system, uh, they actually use a lot of TPR in their songs. Uh, and they have songs where you do actions as you sing the songs. Uh, that is a form of TPR for teaching phonics too. Uh, for adult learners, uh, it can be used to teach more complex skills like storytelling or giving presentations. Uh, for example, you can have uh, people present a story in English or prepare and prepare a story in English where they have to do some actions during uh, the story to explain different scenes uh, and then they have to have other people come up and do the actions and explain what they meant uh, and that's another visual way of using TPR for uh, adult learners through role play presentations and storytelling. Uh, so let me give you an example of an exercise uh, a very common and popular exercise called Simon Says, uh, and this is uh, this does use TPR too. Uh, Simon Says, or sometimes called Teacher Says, is a game where you have the student do the action that the teacher says. So, is, is that the homophone song? Uh, it's not Jason? not a song. No. So the game of Simon Says. Uh, this is a fun game to end the lesson. Uh, as a fun finish, um, you will ask your students as a group to do an action such as touch your nose. Everybody will touch your nose. So you'll say, Simon says, touch your nose. Everybody does it. Simon says, touch your ears. Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, touch your chin. Okay, but then you will explain to the students, if I do not say Simon says, you should not do the action. For example, I say, Simon says, touch your nose, touch your head. And then the students that don't listen and touch their head, they can sit down and be out of the game until, and you can keep playing until you have one winner. Uh, so this allows uh, the students to improve their listening skills because they have to listen very carefully to make sure they're hearing the word Simon says or not hearing the word Simon says. Uh, they also have to listen to the command and make sure they're doing it correctly. Uh, and you can sometimes try to trick the student by saying, touch your nose, and then uh, the teacher will touch your ears. Uh, so that you make sure that the student is focusing on what they hear and not on what they see. Um, so this can be just a fun uh, game that uses TPR uh, to help students uh, understand and to check understanding too. Uh, for adult learners, you can do role play uh, such as customer service scenarios, uh, divide your class into pairs, have each group uh, do a different customer service scenario uh, and act up things like pointing how much is this, uh, it's three dollars, the action of taking money out and things like that as you're speaking. Um, uh, or as at a, a scenario at a restaurant. Uh, calling a waiter, um, asking, asking for the, can I have the menu, please? Uh, could I uh, get the bill? Things like that. Uh, so you can be used in adults in role play exercises, uh, which can be really useful. And um, this is an example of one here. Okay, I'll go through a few tips, a conclusion, and then uh, we'll go to questions. So. Uh, TPR can be a very effective method in teaching English. Um, I don't think the method of writing something on a whiteboard and having the students 
write it down in their books is, is very effective at all when it comes to learning a language or writing complicated grammar rules on the board uh, and having students uh, write them down, verb to be plus blah, 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 equals whatever, uh, like some kind of crazy algebra uh, expect, um, equation. Um, in my opinion, grammar shouldn't be taught until, until much later. And uh, the best way is to have them try and learn more naturally. And TPR is a great way to learn naturally through assigning in their brain actions to words as well as just direct translations. So you're cutting out the translation part. Um, so teachers can improve their use of TPR by adapting different activities. Uh, teachers should usually set clear goals and objectives. So um, don't just use TPR for everything. Make sure you know what key phrases you want the student to learn or key vocabulary and make sure you add uh, actions and TPR for that. Again, make sure it's not only you doing the action, but you have the students repeat, you have the students do it and you guess what it is. You do it, the students guess what it is. You say it and the student says it. You and the students do it together, teacher to teacher, student to teacher, student to student practice. Uh, you can break them up in pairs and have them practice uh, as well. Um, and teachers should adapt these, well, or in my opinion, should adapt these on an individual uh, student basis, uh, depending on their learning styles as well, and also the complexity and the frequency of the commands. So commands that are often used in the classroom are useful to be taught uh, with this method. All right. So in conclusion, TPR is very effective uh, for, and it can be used with all different age groups. Uh, teachers can promote language acquisition, improve retention of new vocabulary, and also enhance pronunciation. Um, right. So we have another video here. Uh, this is uh, a short video, and in this one, they're using uh, flashcards as part of the TPR exercise. So I'll show this video quickly and then we'll go to the questions after this last video. Let me see how I shared it before with the sound. I think I have to copy the link. All right, great, that's working. Action stories consist of a small number of short, contextualized sentences that children learn to understand and gradually to express themselves through the total physical response, or TPR method. Teaching a foreign language by using TPR resembles the way that children acquire their first language. They listen, watch and imitate long before they start speaking themselves. This multi-sensory processing of language takes place through the simultaneous activation of the child's visual, auditory and kinesthetic senses. This helps the child to... So what she's talking about here is uh, that TPR allows students to learn uh, through three methods. Visual meaning what they see, audio to read what they hear, and kinesthetically movements and actions, and the remembering of different actions and movements. Gradually understand new language in a holistic way. It's learning by doing in the best sense of the word. Now let's go back to the classroom and see how Herbert first introduces a few key words that the students will need to know so that they can follow the action story he wants to do with them later. Plane. 
plain. Plain. Car. Car. Plain. Car. Teddy. Teddy. Okay. Plain. Car. Teddy. Plain. Car. Teddy. Doll, doll, plain, car, teddy, doll. Okay. Now that the students have learned the key words that they are going to need, let's see how Herbert gets them to understand sentences by listening to instructions and imitating his actions. Now, stand up, please. Stand up, please. Okay, good. Fly your plane. Fly your plane. Drive your cobs. Okay, once more. Fly your plane. Drive your car. So in this situation of using TPR, first he taught the vocabulary uh, through flashcards. After they understood the vocabulary, he taught short sentences uh, with action words and used TPR to explain the action words such as drive and fly. Okay. Hug your teddy. Hug your teddy. Kiss your doll. Mm. Okay, once more. Fly your plane. <laughs> Drive your car. Vroom. Hug your teddy. Kiss your doll. So that was the first phase of an action story. What's important here is that the teacher adapts his or her teaching pace to the student's pace of learning. In other words, the teacher introduces the sentences gradually and one after the other, and always repeats the previous sentence or sentences before introducing a new one. What's also important is that the teacher strictly keeps to the order the sentences were presented in. Next, we'll see the second phase, where Herbert gives the instructions, and it's important, remember, that this is done in the same order as before. But this time, he doesn't give the students a model for the actions. So the children have to listen and carry out the instructions without seeing the teacher act them out. Being in a group gives them security, and they're learning from one another. I'm going to sit down. No, you, you don't sit down. You stand up. You stand up, please. Yes. Okay. Now you do it. You do it. Fly your plane. Drive your car. Hug your teddy. Kiss your doll. Yes. Good. So, what's next? Well, once the students are able to carry out the actions easily, it's now time for the third phase. As before, the students listen to the instructions and carry them out, but with one difference. This time, Herbert changes the order of the instructions. And now, no, 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 stand up. And now in chumbled order, in chumbled order, chumbled order, chumbled order. Okay. Uh, drive your car. Kiss your doll. Fly your plane. Hug your teddy. Kiss your doll. Fly your plane. Drive your car. Hug your teddy. Kiss your doll. 
Hug your teddy. Shanta. Hug your teddy. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Sit down, please. As you can see, for the students, action stories are fun. And at the same time, they're an important way of making the children feel that they can understand the target language from the very beginning. The final phase is when students use a worksheet from their books as they listen to the same action story from the audio CD. Toys. An action story. Fly your plane. The children listen and put the pictures into the correct order. This consolidates their learning and assesses in an action-oriented way how well they have understood the sentences that they have just learned. They can do so by writing numbers, or if they haven't yet learnt to write numbers, they draw the corresponding number of dots onto the dice at the top of each of the pictures, as shown on the worksheet. Poppy, well done! Really good. Okay, so uh, that was another example of TPR uh, and uh, different options you can use. You can also create your own worksheets uh, for your students to do as a follow-up exercise. And uh, overall, it's a very effective method. So as we're running out of time a little bit today, uh, let's go to questions. Uh, if anybody has any questions today, what's this here? Ah, there we go. All right, so um, I think you can, ah, we have a raised hand, uh, and please apologize in advance if I read your name wrong, um, because I, these are hard names, some of these. Okay, uh, so how do I give you access to speak? Hi, Adele, do you have a question? Can you hear? Uh, please Mia, unmute yourself. You have raised your hand, I think. If you have anything to ask to Fraser, please yep. don't uh, mute. I think you can unmute yourself. Yeah. I are you died? Did you have a question? Sorry. Okay, and yep. I can see your hand is raised. I think you have to unmute yourself or you can type the question if you want to write it. Uh, yes, yes, I have a question. Yes. Um, uh, for now, I'm in UAE, so, and you know, we have a lot of students that they are, uh, non-English uh, speaking, uh, students. For this, can, is it advisable for the teachers to use, uh, videos, worksheets, and flashcards during the lesson section because of the students? Yes, definitely. Um, so... Uh, TPR can be used in many ways. It's an effective, it's effective way of teaching, but it's not the only way. Uh, it's also great to supplement it with audio and visual videos uh, that are also related to the target vocabulary or the target phrases that you're teaching. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay, and. Uh, Sorry again if I say your name wrong. Maeshwaran. Yeah. Yes, Fraser. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your session and thanks for APD Day uh, for giving such an opportunity. Uh, my question for the day is uh, two questions to be very simple. And I want to know how do you bridge the gap between uh, young learners and adult learners when a teacher like me has both the teaching on the same day? So. You have a, a young learner and an adult learner in the same class at the same yes, time? I, I do private tuitions for young learners with Spanish and English. And I teach for undergraduates and postgraduates of Spanish and English. So the day goes on like this. Mm -hmm. uh, do you mean during the same session, the same teaching session you have? No, 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 on a different, on a, on a different sessions. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so as I explained before, uh, when using TPR with kids, it's more about funny actions, uh, them repeating it, them having fun, and uh, with adults, our older students to transition, it's more about uh, practicing role play and dialogue uh, experiences uh, such as uh, eating out at a restaurant or uh, everyday activities such as um, going to watch a movie, uh, organizing a meetup with friends, organizing a phone call. Uh, you can even pretend to answer the phone and things like mm -hmm. that. So uh, it's more role play and adding more actions and visual things into the role play to help with the with the learning. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And what is this uh, courseware you had mentioned in your profile under it says a courseware? Is that your own patent that you actually developed a course material for, for like for example TPR? Uh, I've seen. Uh, Yes, so I, I developed courseware called, um, you can go to eslcourseware.com okay. uh, and there is um, courseware that I've developed. It's not specific for TPR, but it's uh, it's courseware and PowerPoints that are designed to be uh, used in the online classroom. Uh, so I'll, I'll put the link if anybody's interested. Yeah, that will be great, really. I mean, be very helpful. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you so much, Fraser. Thank you. I appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Ah uh, yes, Venu, Venu or Venu? Yes, Venu. It is Venu. Okay. Um, wonderful listening to you, Fraser. It, it's uh, so much of uh, learning. Uh, you know, while you were conducting this session, also the way you went through your lesson uh, is something that uh, you know for guys like me is is a learning. So uh, do take the compliment first. Now, uh, the the uh, I've never taught uh, young learners, so that that's not uh, uh, I have no knowledge of how it works there. But I do teach a lot of people uh, the courses like IELTS and then the TOEFL and GRE and stuff like that. So uh, for them, these are slightly the requirements are slightly different. But uh, perhaps uh, uh, I mean, you may suggest. If I can actually adapt some of your lessons to their requirements, does that make a bit of sense? Yeah. So uh, you mean you would wish to use a TPR with your IELTS students? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have I've experienced preparing students for the the IELTS test uh, as well before, and uh, to be honest, I wouldn't use that much TPR while teaching. IELTS, because teaching IELTS is very specific. You're teaching students how to pass a very specific test uh, and how to uh, score the, the band six or band seven or whatever their target is. Um, so I think it's not that effective for IELTS because at that level, you're more focused on uh, getting them to speak more clearly, pronounce well, um, have good sentence structure, uh, use lots of ad advanced vocabulary in their in their answers. So it's, uh, I would say it's not, TPR is probably not the right solution for, for that, yeah. Okay, no way it can be applicable. Is that what uh, you're saying? Yeah, it can, uh, and that would be through role play. Um, so role play exercises. Not much more than that, yes. Yeah. I agree, I agree, I agree. Yes, but wonderful listening to you, as I think. A lot yeah. of learning for me as well. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Venue. Venu. My, my pleasure. All right. Uh, next question. All right. Did anyone else have a question before we wrap up today? Anyone have any queries? Any questions? I don't think so, Fraser. Okay, great. Then uh, we'll leave it there today. If anyone has any questions later, uh, this is my email here, uh, founder at teachersexchange.com without the E. Um, if you do have any questions later, I'll be happy to, to get back to you. Uh, sure. And Thanks again uh, for the opportunity to present today. It's been interesting for me too. And uh, you, yeah, I wish you all the best in your, in your career through education or whatever you do in the future. All right. Thank you.